You know, over the years, I've learned that everyone makes mistakes, even the best of us. But is Dan Clark really the best of us? On Audio Science Review, he's treated like a god for creating the Dan Clark stealth. However, Dan Clark hadn't made a single good headphone before this. He made a headphone measurement presentation on Canjam that was complete trash, and Amir is praising him for it. I'm not even sure if he watched the video. Some of the things he said are completely false. He starts by giving an explanation of sound power, which is mostly correct. And so what happens is when you get the sum of all these reflections, the actual sound power will be this purple line where energy uh, from the different areas of the room combines to give a frequency response that looks more like this. And so that's uh, in an ideal room with an ideal speaker, you would have a measured response approximating a curve like this, and that's what you would perceive as flat or neutral. However, it all goes downhill from there. If we have a speaker in a room that's equalized to this curve and is as close as we can get to ideal, we'll give people the ability to adjust equalizers on their headphones, and then we will measure the resultant response curve when they think they've got it to match the room. What listeners were originally given was a flat in-room frequency response, not a downward sloping response. 11 listeners, both trained and untrained, adjusted a flat in-room target response of a stereo loudspeaker system. He also says that the goal of headphone equalization is to match the sound power response of the speaker, perceived at least. However, this is also completely false. First of all, sound power is not what they're using as their basis. They are using in-room response which is 12% direct sound, 44% early reflections, and 44% sound power. And so it was basically an attempt to subjectively correlate a, an ideal linear loudspeaker in a quality room to what you hear in headphones and map that back to the gross fixture because that was the most common fixture and still is. And so the result was the Harman curve uh, in the blue line uh, represents approximately the curve that you would see uh, if you measured a headphone that had an acoustic response that was similar to the sound power response that you'd hear in a room. Is that clear to everybody? The black line is the preferred in-room frequency response. It is not the linear downward sloping sound power he suggests. And in green we can see the flat in-room frequency response. For the headphone curve, green is the in-room frequency response received at the eardrum of the measurement rig. Black is the preferred frequency response. I honestly have my doubts this guy even read the paper after listening to the atrocious things he said. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, a comment, and possibly share it with your friends.